And now, Bruce Stephen Holmes for Timeless Voyager Radio. Good morning, everyone. This is Bruce Stephen Holmes for Timeless Voyager Radio, and I want to welcome all of you to the show. It's a very, very beautiful day here in Santa Barbara. For those of you listening in other parts of the country, it's come up very cold. Um, my guest today, very influential man in uh, most communities of information, uh, the gentleman, uh, William Cooper, uh, the book, Behold the Pale Horse, 500 pages of well-documented, most suppressed information ever published in the history of the world. Welcome to the show, Bill Cooper. Uh, thank you. Good morning. 500 pages of the most suppressed information ever published in the history of the world. That's a tall statement. Well, it's not only the most suppressed, but uh, in my book, it's the most well-documented. Um, we are, as a whole people, I believe, and have been for many, many years, living in a fantasy world. The real world is much different than what the average American uh, would ever believe uh, without going through a process of uh, research and enlightenment that uh, would literally shatter everything that they've been taught in their life. So, how about an example? Something perhaps that's happened in the last few months, a good example of, of what happens with media and how we are being uh, fooled. Well, I could give many examples. The, uh, the uh, inflationary period in the 70s, which was blamed upon uh, a higher price of a barrel of oil, um, the price being set by OPEC, uh, is sheer fantasy. The truth is, is that inflation cannot be caused by the price of oil or the price of uh, cement or the price of, uh, price of wheat or anything else. Uh, inflation is caused by the printing of more money, which has no backing, or uh, the making available of money in the form of credit, in which case there's no currency printed whatsoever. Um, this creates more money in the hands of the people, which enables them to demand more products, for instance, more people could buy real estate and homes. The result of that is that the prices of those items go up because our economy is based upon the supply and demand, and that's what causes prices to rise or fall. Um, another example would be the Gulf War, um, which was rehearsed for many, many years. There was a book printed in 1985 called U.S. Rapid Deployment Forces, uh, printed by Arco Press in which they outlined a, an operation called Operation Bright Star, which was conducted every single year by sending troops to the Middle East to practice liberating a small country which had been overrun by its neighbor. In the book, the country named was Kuwait, and the neighbor, of course, uh, was Iraq. And um, so this was outlined. The whole scenario was planned. It was put into effect and rehearsed for many years. And uh, what it actually did was not liberate Kuwait. Uh, what the, the truth of the matter is, is that we gave uh, Saddam Hussein the go-ahead to go into Kuwait. The ruling class of Kuwait was in on this from the beginning. They benefited from the reduction of a population which was becoming burdensome to them. Uh, this was also a benefit to Iraq, and it established for the first time in the history of international law and the United Nations that the United Nations has the authority to pass a resolution and then send a police force to enforce that resolution and then require the member nations to foot the bill for that police action. It was, in fact, as George Bush said, he called it his fifth agenda, uh, was to create a new world order. It was, in fact, uh, first and foremost to uh, begin the process of creating a new world order and transfer sovereignty from nations to the United Nations 
and established an international law that what used to be under the uh, under the law of the world independent sovereign nations answerable to no one but themselves are another nation with a uh, an overwhelming military force it then required it then set the precedent that nations are answerable to the united nations and not to themselves Here's Stephen Holmes timeless Voyager radio my guest today William Cooper author of Beh behold the pale horse 500 pages of the most documented information about the suppression of, it's like, everything. Um, what made you decide on the title? Well, what's, what's happening in the world today would give the impression that the fulfillment of the prophecy in the Book of Revelations and Nostradamus and many others are, are actually coming to pass. But if you read my book, you begin to understand that this is, is part of the bringing about of their new world order, a one-world totalitarian socialist uh, government, which we're in the process of, of being um, um, incorporated in, into. Um, part of this is to convince people by actually creating incidents that, that fulfill prophecy in order to neutralize large segments of the population so that they will not oppose the destruction of the sovereignty of nations and for instance in our case the constitution and the bill of rights and actually coming under the aegis of a foreign power which is the united nations uh... you see we're only one nation in the entire world and even though we have a veto in the security council now uh... that's not going to last eventually we will be subject to the whim of the vote of the uh, of the General Assembly and the decisions of the Security Council when most of the nations of the world may go against us. So what we're looking at is a complete change in the entire structure of, of uh, world order and a shift in the power from the so what used to be the Soviet Union and the United States to uh, a, a large number of third world countries who can outvote us. You're going to see a tremendous shift of, uh, of um, wealth and natural resources from the industrialized nations to the third world countries. And that's what these uh, trade agreements are all about. Now, Bill, you uh, have been very well known, of course, in the UFO community. And how does the UFO community, with its own conspiracies, how does that bring you into this information that you are now talking about? Well, most people realize by now that what is popular known, popularly uh, known as UFOs are real. They would be real in any event because UFO simply means unidentified flying objects. So if you look up in the sky and see something that is so far away you can't identify it, that <laughs> classifies as a UFO. But I'm talking more specifically as these strange craft that seem to defy the laws of physics as we know them and have been cited by millions of people all over the world and these people are not kooks or nuts or wackos uh, although there are uh, an overwhelming majority of that kind of, of uh, people attached to what you call the quote UFO community unquote the woo woo crowd if you will um, these sightings are real and these craft are also real and they do appear to defy the laws of gravity as we know them uh, are the laws of physics as we know them. Uh, however, in my research, I have uh, I have uh, uncovered the fact that there is indeed a secret space program that's been going on since approximately 1954. Was ordered by General Eisenhower when he was president. Uh, previous to that, the Nazis had experimented with this technology uh, previous to and during World War II, and it had actually. Uh, developed a disc-shaped flying craft which they perfected to the point where they had been test flown and some of them were actually used as weapons against uh, our bombers and those were called Foo Fighters. They, look, they appeared to be round balls of fire which was nothing more than the, than the uh, sighting of the exhaust from the, from the propulsion system of these discs. They would fly close to our aircraft and put out an electromagnetic uh, field which would disable the electronics in our aircraft and cause them to deviate from their from their uh, planned target. 
and many of them uh, had engine shutdowns and complete radio failure, and uh, they would begin to fall from the sky until they left the immediate vicinity of these so-called food fighters, and then they would regain their uh, electronic uh, power and uh, be able to restart their engines, and at that point they would usually turn around and head back home, uh, thus not completing their mission. So this technology, to a small extent, was successful in the war. Uh, if they had ever developed these craft to the point where they could have mounted weapons systems upon them, uh, they would have had control of the air, and the, turn, and the tide of the war would have been turned. Uh, unfortunately for Mr. Hitler, um, we won the war before he was able to, to perfect the, the disc-shaped flying uh, technology. Um, and we, uh, the Russians, uh, Canada, Great Britain, and most probably Australia, captured portions of this technology uh, post-war and uh, were perfecting it and have been perfecting it ever since. So we know that uh, Russia, the United States, Great Britain, Canada, and maybe Australia have uh, perfected this technology and have been flying it since then. Now, in my research, I located a plan that goes all the way back to 1917, and I believe even before that, where uh, the first inkling that I had that this plan existed was a speech made by John Dewey in 1917 in New York City. Uh, to the visiting Japanese delegation headed by Viscount Ishihi. And basically what he said is the very first sentence of the speech that he made that night, uh, and remember, bear in mind that this was 1917, John Dewey, uh, who by the way is the father of our failing educational system, public education system, uh, made this statement, quote, the best way, oh no, he said, quote, Someone once told me that the best way to unite all humanity in a one world government and do away with war forever would be if we were attacked by some other species from some other planet, unquote. Uh, this has been echoed throughout the years, and I believe that the uh, radio broadcast by Orson Welles in the Mercury Theater in 1936 of the War of the Worlds, which created a, an actual panic along the East Coast and caused the stock market to drop precipitously the following morning, uh, was, in effect, a test of whether or not this plan would work, whether the American public would be gullible enough to believe uh, that there were, number one, actual extraterrestrial beings that came from somewhere else that could traverse the great expanse of space and actually come here and threaten us. Uh, the test was extremely successful. And I believe that the only thing after they, they made that test that they needed to do was develop a technology that would convince the American people and the people of the world that extraterrestrials, number one, were real, number two, were here, number three, were technologically superior to us, therefore represented a threat. Uh, this would cause all the peoples of the world and the nations of the world to be willing to lose or drop their sovereignty, their national sovereignty, and unite in a one world government in order to pool the resources of the world uh, to face this threat. Now, it wouldn't make any difference whether they were outwardly hostile or not. The fact that they existed would, in fact, constitute a threat if they came here first and were technologically superior. Now, whether they're real or not, I believe that that is exactly what this UFO um, um, presentation that's being made to the world is designed to create, and that's an artificial external threat to the Earth to facilitate the formation of a one-world government. Now, many of us in the, in the UFO community understand that, that uh, if there are higher intelligences, most of them, let's say 95% or more, would abide by a non-intrusion treaty in the first place. So uh, those would be positive, let's say, or, or uh, angelic or somehow at least life-supporting for us. So the point I guess that you're making is that is that the entire idea then would be to scare the public into thinking that if anyone out there is able to come here, they'll come here for reasons of enslavement. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is just the fact that they exist would constitute a threat. When you meet someone that you do not know and you have no idea who they are, what their intentions are, or what their history is, you cannot trust them blindly. 
And uh, number two, as far as your statement goes, there is no evidence existing anywhere in this world that extraterrestrials are real, much less that they're here. We know that the craft that are flying around in our skies are real, and we can prove that at least some of them are owned and operated by human governments and controlled by human uh, control here on this earth. Uh, when you can't even prove that someone from somewhere else exists, how can you sit down and decide or dictate what their policy would be? That's absolutely ludicrous. Um, number one, even if they did exist and even if we could prove it, uh, it would in no way uh, dictate uh, that they would be harmless or harmful or that they would have a non-intrusion policy or anything else. This is all the woo-woo stuff and it's wishful thinking and it's mostly 100% bullshit. Now, what do you think of the possibility that um, that the Bible then is an inaccurate uh, document? Well, considering that the Bible was uh, dictated and, and put together under the aegis of a pagan, sun-worshipping Roman emperor named Constantine at the Council of Lycia, uh I would say that there's a there's a good uh, there's a good uh, possibility that the whole Bible was put together and written in order to uh, control large segments of the population. And I'm not saying that that's the case or not the case. I'm just saying that because the man who was overseeing the actual formation and the selection of the books and passages that would be included in the Bible was a pagan Roman emperor whose first and foremost interest was preserving the Roman Empire and his own throne as, as emperor of that Roman Empire, I'd say the possibility exists. Timeless Voyager Radio with the show. My name is Bruce Stephen Holmes. My guest today, Bill Cooper, author of, among other books, Behold the Pale Horse. We're talking mostly about some of the greatest uh, suppressed uh, information in the history of the world today. Um, you'll be able to talk directly with Bill and myself, 893-2424, 893-2425, 893 is our listener today. You can in the calls. If you're interested, you can begin calling in now. We'll start taking calls in about five minutes. Bill, well, you obviously are one of the most controversial people in this entire area. What did you think about the Waco, Texas incident? Well, as you know, um, I was a member of the Office of Naval Intelligence uh, when I was in the Navy many, many years ago, and I also have a radio broadcast from WWCR, which beginning on the 27th of December will be broadcast on 5.890 at 10 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. It's 9 Pacific, 11 Central, and midnight Eastern. Call the hour of the time, and uh, that's Monday through Friday. And when, when I heard what was happening in Waco, I knew instantly that something was very, very wrong. Uh, like everyone else, I was um, sitting watching uh, CNN, which I normally do at that time of the day, uh, just to get a gist of what's going on in the world before I begin to find out, or at least what they're telling us is going on in the world, before I begin my day of trying to find out what's really going on in the world, which is usually quite different from what we're told. Uh, I saw a press conference held by a, a member of the Bureau, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms in which he stated that they had just performed a raid on a, a uh, religious cult in Waco, Texas. They called it a religious cult called the Branch Davidians. And uh, they had uh, suffered four dead and 16 wounded. And uh, that the, the situation was uh, very bad, and um, that um, uh, they were actually um, placing these people under siege. And that the, he stated that the reason that they made the raid was that they had a uh, communique from a foreign source through the State Department that this, the members of this church were uh, getting ready to commit mass suicide. Now, that was the first thing that they said on February the 28th, 1993. I immediately knew that the man was lying. Most people accepted what he said because most people are sheeple. Uh, if they're not uh, just ab living in an abject state of stupidity, they are uh, sheeple, ignorant, and uh, unquestioning. And they've been brainwashed never to question what they're told by someone in a position of authority. The truth is that suicide is not a federal crime. 
In fact, it's not a crime at all on the federal law books. And number two, even if it were, uh, 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 members of a church in Waco, Texas, would not fall under federal jurisdiction. Therefore, there should have been no federal agency there dealing with any kind of a projected suicide. Number two, anywhere where suicide is a crime, it's not a crime until it happens. So someone planning suicide would have come more properly under the uh, supervision of psychologists or psychiatrists and not a law enforcement agency. So uh, I, I had uh, several reasons to know that this man was lying. Uh, and another reason is that even if they were planning to commit suicide, and even if it had have been a, a federal crime, and even if the federal government had sent someone to deal with this, it would never have been the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, which is an agency that was created during Prohibition to levy a tax on alcohol, tobacco, and firearms. They are not a law enforcement agency. They are a taxing agency. Therefore, there's no reason that those people should have ever been there uh, at all. So basically, I packed up my gear and went to Waco, Texas, and covered it on site. I went to the uh, press conferences, and I found out that we were lied to from beginning to end. No one really knows what it was really all about, but it wasn't about any of the things that we were told. There was no child abuse. There was no child molestation. David Koresh did not have several wives and was not sleeping with uh, all of the women in the compound. Uh, they did not have any illegal weapons whatsoever. All the weapons they had were purchased legally. Two of the members of the, the church uh, had the federal firearms licenses. It was one of the methods that they used to earn money to support the church was that uh, these two members attended uh, uh, gun shows across the country and they bought and sold uh, firearms weapons. And in fact, on the day that the raid was made, uh, uh, Paul uh, Fada, one of the two members who had a federal firearms license, had taken most of the weapons from the church to attend a firearms uh, uh, show in another city. So. Most of the weapons that they claimed that these people had were not even there to begin with. The weapons that they did have and that were with Paul Fada were all legal weapons. There were no machine guns, there were no hand grenades, there were no rocket launchers. Uh, and the whole reason for this thing uh, is, is obscured, but uh, eventually, with, uh, as we continue to dig, we may be able to, to find out exactly why this was done. Uh, but. For whatever reason, uh, it was not a United States police action anyway. The police action was conducted by the International Monetary Fund under the United Nations. It consisted of anti-terrorist guerrilla uh, warfare teams of the Department of the Special Operations uh, Division of the Department of Defense called DELTA. Uh, it consisted of members of Interpol. There was a United States Navy SEAL team on site. They had uh, military psychological uh, operations, uh, warfare teams on site that were actually directing psychological uh, operations to the Branch Davidians. Uh, there were members of the British SAS, and there was British uh, look down uh, heat seeking radar capability uh, equipment on site. They were using uh, British uh, aircraft as reconnaissance aircraft with uh, look down uh, uh, heat seeking radar and uh, the whole thing was uh, was uh, really an exercise in terror and um, whatever the reason for the whole thing it has not been disclosed as of yet you know uh, we have a call but before we take the call on the line um, the bottom line here, you've had a chance uh, to speak with Linda Thompson, who did a very, very interesting uh, videotape called The Big Lie, uh, Waco, Texas, The Big Lie. Um, do you have any opinions or suspicions about this? Well, we know that most of the Branch Davidians were dead uh, early on the morning uh, that the fire started long before the fire started they were dead we know that teams were sent in to execute these people uh, we know that the fire was set by uh, the forces that were that were um, that placed the uh, the church under siege 
We do not know exactly which force sent these teams in. Uh, we know that the tanks had flamethrowers on them, uh, and that's plainly visible in Linda's film, The Big Lie. Um, there's an awful lot about Waco, Texas that is, is uh, that more people should be interested in discovering what's going on instead of accepting what they've been told. I was absolutely amazed uh, when I heard Americans say they're just a bunch of religious nuts, they deserve to die. Or they're just a bunch of religious nuts, they deserve uh, what they got. Uh, this is not the American way. And uh, I might remind all of your listeners that when you take the rights away from one, you take the rights away from all. And when you accept the propaganda and the lies, uh, which, in effect, uh, what happened, uh, Bruce, was these people were executed, and their execution was accepted by the American people simply because they were politically incorrect. And uh, that is extremely dangerous, because what it means is all they have to do is pin a label of political incorrectness on you in order to justify murdering you without due process, without being convicted in a court of law. Uh, this is so alien to the American ideology and the principles and the ideals upon which this nation was founded and for what Americans profess uh, to believe in and be willing to uh, be ready to fight and die for, that it, it's beyond me how the whole thing ever occurred. KCSB FM 91.9 in Santa Barbara. Bruce Stephen Holmes for Timeless Voyager Radio. My guest today, if you have not gotten it yet, you should write his name down. William Cooper, author of Behold the Pale Horse, among other books. Uh, certainly a very controversial guest. Uh, we are talking about just about every conspiracy that you can think of. Um, I explained to you once again how the phones work, 8932424, 8932425, uh, You will be able to uh, address Bill through the phone, but he will not be able to answer you, and that is because of the way things are hooked up here at the station. Um, but he can hear you, and I assure you that he's very interested in your calls. We'll take the first one. Uh, Bill, I'll put you on hold, and you'll be able to hear through the phone. Hopefully, if not, I'll be able to repeat it for you. Okay. All right. 